Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, caps on damages and uh, since we're not going to be really taking in um, uh, phone calls we don't really necessarily have to give a disclaimer but you can we can talk about how to get a hold of you guys sure uh, you, you can come into our offices anytime here in Bardstown we're at 114 South 3rd Street uh, we work or open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday walk in anytime we'd be happy to help in Louisville we're at 108 Browns Lane and again, walk in any time in those same work hours, and we'll ha we're happy to talk to you and see if we can help you out. You can go to our website at www.mhsattorneys.com, find out a lot of information, and you can even ask a question on there, and we'll respond okay. to it. There you go. Well, today our subject line is caps, um, which most people realize that's something on the top. Uh, but we're talking about caps on damages. There's some efforts underway to s put a cap on what some of the damages are. Can y'all enlighten our audience on that? Sure. The, the Kentucky Constitution, um, it, well, the United States Constitution gives you a right to trial by jury, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the Seventh Amendment. And the Kentucky Constitution, Section 54, allows a right to trial by jury, and nothing in those limits the amount of damages you can get. People are proposing now that we put caps in medical negligence cases on what people can get for the pain and suffering elements of the claim. So if you are injured through no fault of your own and become a quadriplegic, they're proposing that all you can get is $250,000 for your pain and suffering. We don't think that's reasonable. We think that's, uh, uh, in fact, a little insane. Uh, but that's what's being proposed. And Jared can talk a little bit more about what's going on. First of all, uh, Pain and suffering, um, what would be the other form of restitution, I guess, or, or that you could get? Of co compensation. Compensation. So, you know, when you bring any, any sort of civil claim, you're looking at, as far as damages are concerned, compensatory damages, which are inclusive of pain and suffering, mm -hmm. um, things like lost wages. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the, the other side of that coin that we've discussed in the past are punitive damages. Yeah. And then there's medical bills, past and future <laughs> medical <laughs> bills. That's kind of what I was yeah. So a, a cap that's being proposed, I mean, there are so many different situations. If somebody, and we're not trying to, to I'm not trying to say that a person's life is changed, but I have a 101-year-old aunt, and, and I know that is extreme, but, you know, her life expectancy is is not much longer but if somebody suffers this catastrophic type of injury you know that they're 20 years old right um i mean you know they're gonna their pain and suffering will be daily for presumably decades where you know i mean again in reality i've got uh, roth i had a case where an 18 year old was in a car accident and as a result of the car accident that they did they did surgery on him that night, emergent surgery, and the anesthesiologist who had failed the boards five times messed up and kept his blood pressure down at 60 over 30 for 45 minutes. Wasn't keeping an eye on the machines. So when this young man who um, had a scholarship to play college football woke up from the surgery, he was completely blind. So as a result of this car accident and surgery, Again, through no fault of his own, he was made blind by a doctor's mistake. A lady that was still was practicing medicine even though she couldn't pass the boards. A lady that was asleep at the wheel, wasn't paying attention. And if these caps were in place, that young man would only get $250,000 for being blind for the rest of his life. And he's otherwise healthy. Yeah. So in that situation, is $250,000 fair? No, it's not. There's no way. And I think if you were... if each of these legislators were put into a position that, okay, it's someone in your family. Well, that, well it shouldn't apply to, to my family, but it should apply to everybody else. So, Presently, how are caps <laughs> determined in, in a, say, the, the jury said, okay, this person or entity is, is negligent. Uh, how, how are those caps determined now? And what, what type of... Um, information would would uh, would be utilized to determine that. Presently in Kentucky, there there aren't caps. Okay. Right, and so okay. uh, it's a, it's a, it's a bit 
improper to, to say how do we determine caps. Um, currently, per our Constitution, juries at trial weigh evidence that comes in both from the plaintiff side and the defense. And based on the, in, the injuries that the client suffered, um, the jury themselves get together in the jury room and they come up with the number that they think is reasonable or, or fair. Yeah. I misspoke. I should have said how our damage is determined. And that's yeah. Sure. And sure. These, these 12 people have heard all the facts, have been there for the, the three weeks that it took to try the case, have listened to all the witnesses. So they're in the best position to determine what the value of these damages are. Not some legislators, not doctors who are pushing this, not you know the chamber of commerce and certainly not the insurance companies are the ones who are really pushing this because they don't want to have to pay out the money and it should be the people that are deciding it and when you look back at our forefathers you look at john adams you look at thomas jefferson they said the seventh amendment to the constitution the right to trial by jury and to decide the damages that are appropriate for the jury to decide that uh, they said that was the most important amendment to the Constitution. So those people that are strict constitutionalists, people that believe in your Second Amendment rights to right to, you know, uh, bear arms, mm -hmm. should be as incensed by the legislators' attempt to take away our right to trial by jury and our right to have that jury make the decision as to what's fair for the injured person. Um, as you just said. Should it proceed through the legislative channels in Kentucky, it, it, it probably would be constitutionally challenged, wouldn't it? I mean, as you said, our Seventh Amendment. Sure. In order in order for it to pass, it would have to go on the ballot, and uh, a constitutional amendment to the Kentucky Constitution, Section 54, would would have to be voted on uh, by the citizens of the state and and passed through. So, so what, what's being proposed is actually a constitutional amendment. It's not just some, it's not a legislative. Um. They're proposing that the state, individuals in the state be allowed to vote on whether or not Section 54 of the Kentucky Constitution can be set aside so that they can impose these caps. And wh where does, from a political standpoint, where does that stand right now? Because is it? I mean, you mean as far as procedurally? Is it in committee? It's, it's still in the Senate okay. right now. Okay. Yeah. It has not been voted on as of yet. Yeah. Just proposed. Okay. <clears throat> well, it does seem like, um, you know, we, we talk about how we shouldn't change our Constitution because even though it was written some time ago, it still seems to be um, uh, the, the best document that, that, w that, we've, that we operate by. We have the best system in the world. Yeah. People sometimes are um, disappointed in results that they get or feel disenfranchised. But if you look around the world, we have the very best political system, the very best jury system, the very best judicial system. And um, we shouldn't be changing it. We shouldn't be doing things. And, and it's random numbers. Why 250,000? Why not 2 million? Why, you know, where, where are we getting these numbers? And it's, there's really no basis in fact. And, and already last year they've put in, if, if they're concerned that there are frivolous lawsuits, which I would propose that I'm just as upset about a frivolous lawsuit as you are because it, it makes attorneys mm -hmm. look bad and, and it makes it difficult for those of us that have legitimate lawsuits to move forward. But we agree every frivolous lawsuit should be dismissed. They put in medical review panels which is a nine-month delay before you can go to civil court to do it and you have to get a you have a chairperson and you have three specialists three panelists that have to look at it and make decisions and so that's already in place we already have systems in place to prevent what people believe to be frivolous lawsuits what most importantly is in place is the ability of the judge to dismiss those lawsuits and it happens all the time so the, the law, as we have it, um, withstanding the, the, uh, the review panel, but, you know, the judge has that, that right to um, save time and effort and money on, on everybody's case if, if he sees it that. Um, again, you, you pointed out that why uh, any number, I mean, if you're going to set a dollar of a cap, I mean, it doesn't mean that we're not saying if, if, if the cap was $2 million, that somebody um, had, a, had an accident that, that, I mean, you know, the damages could be much less than $2 million. It's not saying that every damage... That's would, exactly right. And, and so, but 
so uh, again, I, I keep thinking in my mind, why, why, why a cap of, of, at any number? Uh, because you know, as you said, the, a jury's there to decide, um, and and our jury verdicts in these type of litigations, they're appealable, aren't they? I mean, I I, like I see all the time where it says the somebody lowered the amount. That's right. They're appealable. Uh, they have not been excessive at all. Yeah. Uh, and um, in Kentucky, especially Kentucky, has, is very, very conservative when it comes to mm -hmm. jury verdicts. When you look at it, uh, the cases that come to trial are the cases where the defendant insurance companies haven't settled. The defense insurance companies are in total control over whether or not they think a case has value. If they think a case has value, they settle it. So the ones that actually make it to trial are the ones that the defendant said, we can win. Mm -hmm. And so if they lose, they they misjudge the case. So, you know, defendants need to be held accountable. There we need we have constitutional protections in place. They have worked for centuries and there's absolutely no reason to be taking this stance just for the sake of saving an insurance company a nickel. Let me let me ask you a question, Roth. What is the smallest form of government <clears throat> that exists in our country today? Uh oh, you did this to me. I said the individual. Twelve-person jury. Twelve-person jury. Twelve-person okay. jury. Okay. Smallest form of government yeah. we got. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, and, and the real fear, looking forward, let's take this out of the realm of of lawyers and and out of the realm of of claims is, um, you know, what happens once we amend the the seventh if we amend the Seventh Amendment? Well, that opens the floodgates to people on any from any political affiliation to proposing constitutional amendments yeah. to other to other um, you know second amendment whatever it may be it's going to open the floodgates and, and give way to to little edits here and there and tweaks and and when would that stop i don't know but it seems in the discussion you know it's it's pretty evident that this is not a change that's being pushed by we the people no it's, it's not it's right. a change being pushed by that entity or that entity or that entity, which may be made up as a people, but it's not, many of those entities don't don't even have much of a footprint in the state of Kentucky. They're insurance companies and so right. forth. Yeah. Right, and they're, in, they're national insurance companies, yeah. and they have a financial interest yeah. in this, and to think otherwise is, is uh, naive at best. Are there, to your knowledge, any other states that anything similar to this that they've gone to that this extent that we're aware of? Amazingly, yeah, there are um, caps in other states yeah. and they have been uh, a resounding failure. In Delaware they have caps and in fact um, they have, that hasn't worked. In Indiana they've had caps and they just mo most recently they've raised those. If, am I correct in saying yes, that, Yes, they Jared? raised them. Um, and what was funny is back when caps first came around Texas was the, the at the front and Texas put caps in place and the insurance companies are like we got to put these caps in place we got to keep the premiums down we got to keep the doctors in the state well they put the caps in place and the premiums didn't go down the premiums kept going up every year the premium and they said wait a minute we put these caps in place and our premiums haven't gone down and they're like well we never promised they would yeah. so it you know it, it it's it's much ado about nothing. It's yeah. protecting insurance companies' interest and protecting their bottom line, which, it, you know, it'd be one thing if it had lowered the premiums. It'd been, been one thing if we, we don't have a problem in Kentucky with doctors leaving the state. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no evidence to support that. We have more doctors than we need in Kentucky, quite frankly, but we have more lawyers than we need in Kentucky. <laughs> can't, as a friend of mine, you say, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a lawyer. But, um, <laughs> You know, we have more lawyers and or more doctors than we need. We're not losing people to other states. Caps have not been successful in other states. They haven't proven, you know, this benefit to anybody except the insurance companies. And I, I don't know about you, but even my car insurance, I don't remember the last time my premium went down on my car insurance. And I haven't had a car accident, <laughs> the, knock on wood. They just want you to feel good that it didn't go up as much as you know as it did last year right as it did yeah. last year yeah uh you know again i still have that feeling that you know the, uh, the the laws of the our state and the laws of the country are to protect 
the people, not to protect any um, business, anything of that nature. Um, you know, um, and it seems like this is a certain uh, a step towards protecting special interests. We'll call it that. I would agree. Yeah. So, what what can our viewers, listeners do um, if if they've understood what we're talking about here? And that is pick what? up the phone and call. Okay. Call your, your legislators and let okay. them know that, that you are vehemently opposed to uh, a, a yes vote for SB2. Okay. Ask them to vote no, no, no.